the, the oceans are absorbing red light, so that's why they turn blue. Glaciers are a bit the same. They, they have that blue color because they absorb the, the red light, and so they, they turn out looking blue. Snow is white because um, you have some ice crystals in there that scatter the light out. Icebergs sort of go in between that white and blue color because it's somewhere between snow and pure ice. Jade iceberg is a whole different thing. And when the icebergs sort of carve off, then you can see that beautiful jade iceberg color. So the theory around that is now that we think that it's due to the iron that is incorporated during that process. It is, hasn't been really tested yet, so we're hoping to do that one day. What happens is that when icebergs carve off and end up into the open ocean, they can fertilize the, the surface waters with those nutrients and uh, iron being a limiting nutrient in the southern ocean, you can end up having some phytoplankton blooms. So we've seen this on this voyage actually. Often when you pass a really large iceberg, you can see a, a peak in coral field in the water column because of that fertilization from the icebergs. And the jade icebergs having even more iron content than you know normal icebergs, you can really guess that you could have a big effect on the local productivity actually from them. Our team is looking at what is driving phytoplankton growth in the ocean. A lot of filtration, so collecting seawater and looking at what type of phytoplankton is growing, how much carbon are they sequestering. Um, and then the trace metal team then is looking at how much metals is available for them to grow. So we look at nutrients, we look at trace metals. Everything that we do is trying to understand what is driving really that productivity at the very base of the food web. And that's really important because we, we know that phytoplankton takes up carbon dioxide and provides oxygen. And we also know that that carbon is then exported to the seafloor. So we try to understand how phytoplankton may change in the future. How much carbon dioxide is it taking up now? Why and how? And then how much is that going to change in the future as we know that our ice is, is changing the landscape? Phytoplankton is also important for, as a source of food for the higher trophic levels, so it's really the base of the food wave in the Southern Ocean. So we try to really see that, that very first step, that very first piece of the puzzle.